and you know what that's going to be, right? I mean, you know it's going to be Ethernet switching. You know with Ethernet switching, well, what do I have to do to get my directly connected Ethernet devices to be able to communicate? Well, I need to know my VLANs. I need to know my trunking. I need to know Ether channel config. I need to know if I'm going to do any sort of dot one q tunnels and possibly VTP, but VTP just simplifies your configuration. That, you know, those five pieces of information are what you need to get basic IP reachability across your directly connected Ethernet network. The next part is your WAN. Okay, so for your WAN, you know, if, if you think about it, how many different frame relay configs, pure frame relay, can they give you that that you cannot anticipate them giving you in the CCA lab? I mean, how many variations can you have of physical interface, multi-point sub-interface, point-to-point sub-interface, PPP over frame relay? There's really not that many variations that you can have. Now, you may miss points for something advanced, maybe. Uh, frame relay fragmentation, frame relay traffic shaping, frame relay Indian keep alive. You may miss some questions on that, but there shouldn't be any questions that relate to the infrastructure portion of frame relay. And that's what you want to focus on when you start preparing for the CCA lab. Don't spend time on, you know, uh, frame relay traffic shaping. Don't spend time on, you know, frame relay fragmentation until you are 100% solid with the core you know, in the core frame relay config until you can do PPP over frame relay without thinking. Someone could say, configure this PPP over frame relay network and you can look at the diagram and then just jump on the routers and configure it. That's where you want to be for the CCA lab. It's the same thing with ethernet switching. What do you want to know from the, if you go into the CCA lab, what do you want to know? I want to know my VLAN assignments. I want to know my trunking. I want to know my ether channel config requirements. I want to know my dot one Q tunnels. And actually, I, I can work around dot one Q tunnels, meaning I can work around you know making sure I get IP reachability, and maybe I just skip the dot one Q tunnel portion of it. So I mean, if you think about it, there's really not much they can give you uh, that can that can throw you off. Now, there's some advanced features they could give you for you know Ethernet switching. You know, they could give you some advanced spanning tree. You know, you, they could give you some advanced you know sec layer two security. You know, DHCP snooping. You know, all kinds of stuff. Um, that they could give you that, yeah, the, you may lose points for, but they're not going to affect your IP reachability. Okay, so focus on the core portion. So, like when you're looking at multicast, when when let's say if if I got to prepare for the CCA lab and I, and I and I'm going to do multicast, so I'm going to start my multicast uh, preparation. Am I going to read personally? Let's say if if I know what I know now, and I wasn't an RNS CCIE, and I was going to go to the RNS CCIE lab. Would I read a Cisco press book for 300 pages on multicast? Probably not. What I would do is I would take some vendor independent books, get an understanding of multicast. Then I will look at Cisco's implementation of multicast and look at, you know, okay, what do I need to configure a dense mode network? What do I need to configure to configure, uh, you know, a sparse mode? You know, static RPs, what about auto RP? What about BSR? What's the basic config? You know, as far as it relates to basic multicast, you know, all the other stuff, all that other tuning that you do, all those other features, you know, that can come later after you nail down the core. You know, there shouldn't be anybody who goes to the RNSCCA lab and can't get at least the basic multicast, you know, configuration. You know, what happens is people go in there to the CCA lab and they've got a lot of holes in their knowledge base about core multicast configuration so they lose the three points for basic multicast then of course they lose the three points for their advanced multicast configure the two points or the two two point section for advanced multicast because you know their core multicast didn't work yeah they, they're really good with you know inner domain multicast with i don't know why anybody for rnsc say would spend time on it but you know they're really good with the msdp and they're really good with Okay, there, there's a couple, there is a little bit of MSDP that we do cover, but not major as far as the implementation goes. You know, they're really good with some of the advanced features and the advanced filtering, but the core stuff, you know, they're having trouble with. They end up losing all the points, and, you know, little did they know they had a problem with their, you know, their foundation knowledge or core network, and it caused them to fail the CCA lab. So remember that when you're, you're studying. So if you're going to pick up IPv6 for the first time, what do you want to know? I want to know the What's the minimal information I need to get a basic IPv6 network working? And then I want to be an expert at that. I want to be a 10 of 10 at core IPv6. Okay, a little bit of some of the other topics for IPv6, 
you know, and I want to know what those topics are. I want to know where they're documented, but I don't want to spend a lot of time on those. I want to know core IPv6. That's what I want to be an expert at, meaning that if they give me any topology, it doesn't matter, I can knock it out. I can configure this topology. Yeah, I may have some trouble with some of the advanced features of IPv6, but you can't give me a basic topology. You know, you can't give me a topology that I cannot get the basic configuration working. So I have reachability across the network. It goes the same with IPv4. You know, you can't go to the CCA lab without the ability to configure any sort of, you know, IPv4 network topology. You know, there shouldn't be anything that throws you for a cur you know, curve in the CCA lab as far as the core topology goes. And, and this is where people have the problems. Why is that? Because what I'm telling you is what most people think is the easy stuff. They think, oh yeah, I'm good with OSPF. Yeah, I know, you know, I know how BGP works. I, I don't need to worry about this stuff. Brian's talking to, you know, about other people. He's not talking to me. But it's not like that. It's, it's, it's the other way around. I'm talking to the person who thinks they don't need it. And this is the hardest point of, one of the hardest factors when people prepare for the CCA lab. It's to be able to assess yourself and say, I suck at OSPF. Or I don't know as much as I think about BGP. You know, and, and that kind of, you know, the truth, when you can say that to yourself, you know, it, it's, it's, it's the, it gives you the ability to go back and look and see if, hey, you know, well, I do need to practice more OSPF. I do need to practice, you know, you know, more OSPF configs to make sure that, you know, I can do some advanced troubleshooting and verification. I can build any topology they throw at me for OSPF. You know, and it's those people that I mentioned here who take the wrong path for the CCA lab. These are the people who are the self-proclaimed experts at IP routing, the self-proclaimed experts at Ethernet switching. You know, they're experts in their own minds, but they're not experts from a CCI lab perspective there. So, you know, you you definitely got to focus on those core technologies. I, I, let's look at a, a really good example. Let's say I know just basic IPv6. Okay, let's say I just know basic IPv6. So I go in the CCI lab, and I've got six points for IPv6. One part, of course, is you're going to build the IPv6 network. Okay, the second part may be some advanced feature. So if I can build that network off the top of my head, so I can get those first three points, and I know what other features are available for IPv6, maybe I'm not very good with the other features, but I know what they are, and I know where they're documented, I can go then at the documentation to look those things up. I can look those things up real quick and see if I can glean from the documentation, figure out what they're looking for in the task. Okay, but if you know, if, even if I don't get those three points, I should be able to get the three points for the core IPv6. You know, and that that's really where people run into problems because, like I said, you know, people always want the advanced stuff. They want those tips and tricks. They want those gotchas. They want those stupid router tricks. You know, they want those those fancy things they can show off to their coworkers. You know, but they don't want to you know really spend time you know making sure they understand how route redistribution works. You know, they, they want to spend time on, hey, you look, look, I, I can filter this route off and go this other direction here. I want to spend time on, you know, the advanced stuff, the, the, the little tricks there with the iOS. So, you know, I mean, you know, definitely when you're looking at preparing for the CCA lab, 60% of that CCA lab, I can tell you what it is I, without breaking NDA. Think about it. If you're going to build an, IP, an IPv4 network, you know, with Ethernet switches, with WAN connections, you know, you're going to have... Ethernet switching, you know I already talked about the things you're going to have to do with Ethernet switching. Your WAN connections, you're going to have HDLC, or you're going to have PPP, or you're going to have frame relay. PPP is really simple, right? There's really not a lot to it to get the basic PPP up. You know, frame relay, yeah, there's a little bit more, more variations, but you know, the basic frame relay config, you know, there's only so many times, or so many different ways they can ask that. IP, uh, sorry, uh, an IPv4 routing within RIP, within RIP with its individual routing protocol domain. You know, how complicated can that be? You know, so if you look at it like that, think about, you know, half the CCA lab is going to be, you know, a lot of this basic type of config. Now, the bad news, there is possibility that you can run into pre-configuration in the CCA lab. You may walk into the CCA lab and find out your basic PGP is already done. So there goes three easy points or four easy points because now they've done the basic BGP for you. 